Hello, thanks for coming back. My name is Ham Donishman from Johnson Controls, and this is another video for Verisys uh, series of videos that we're providing on our VerisysControls.com. Today it's a little bit different because I want to talk about an, an experience that we've had and possibly, hopefully, a good uh, recommendation for people that are watching this uh, video and be able to provide you some input on some of the retrofit op opportunities that could be out there. So within the last uh, two weeks or so, we installed a project in Glasgow, Kentucky. It was a, it was a bank and it had four changeover bypass systems, VVT systems. Uh, two of them were train rooftops and three of them were York rooftops. They all used to be trained, but we did have three brand new rooftops that were installed on this particular job. The interesting part about this job was that it had an existing train tracker system, VVT system. So the challenge was, what are we going to do from a retrofit perspective? So what I'd like to talk about today is some of the challenges and how we overcome those challenges. And hopefully this video could help some of the people out there that possibly want to use this Ferris's product and do a retrofit project of a, of a train tracker system. So a train tracker system from an architectural perspective is very similar to Verisys. You have what's called the system manager, that's their main panel with the keypad, and they also have a zone coordinator which manages the zones that are underneath uh, the actual zone coordinator with a bypass controller as well. And then you have your rooftop underneath that as well. So the interesting part about the job was that uh, when I walked into the main control room, all their zone coordinators were lined up next to each other, plus their system manager. In the picture you see on my computer here, and this is a fairly older tracker system. There has been some modification to some of the newer ones. And this particular controller uh, is the actual controller of their zone control uh, for, for their zoning system. So I'm not really worried about the wiring down below, but the wiring above is where they bring in their communication wiring from, from the field. So going to, their by, uh, going to all their zone controllers. And then they also bring in their wiring uh, from the rooftop. And then they also bring their communication wiring from, from the bypass controller. So three separate runs, segmented runs, that are coming back to this controller. So the idea was, was very, pretty simple because we, could have, we basically took all those wirings and within Verisys, it basically is a daisy chain going in and out of those wires going into our system. And I could show you that a little bit better on the architecture. So this, this drawing here, I don't know if you can zoom into this a little bit better, this kind of gives you an idea of these terminal blocks that I was referring to on the previous picture but it's showing you this, this, this two-wire landing. But by the way, they, are, they do use two wires. They don't use three wires, but that's okay. We can use two wires as well. So it's basically your, we use the plus and minus for our MSPP trunk, and they've been using these two wires for their communication as well. So these two wires are basically running to the actual rooftop, and then you had two more wires that are actually running to all their zones, and then this two other additional wires here is actually daisy chaining to other zone coordinators they may have. And then you have additional wires here that just go directly to their bypass uh, controller. So we have other videos that we will be showing you later that will explain more of the zone coordinator layout of Verisys and how you could kind of see later yourself that you could basically take these same wiring and reuse them for Verisys uh, wiring as well. So you don't have to run new wires, basically use the existing communication wire, which could save you a lot of money from uh, obviously pulling new wires for communication, so it would be a fairly easy uh, retrofit uh, opportunity. So, you know, if I swing back over here that you could actually see, this is our zone coordinator. So the wires that I was talking about that needs to be daisy chained together, they will come back to our uh, base. Uh, they will come back to our 
brown terminal here, which is the, this is our zone bus, and that gets connected all the way back to our zone coordinators. And in the case of the job that I just uh, talked about, these were the train units. We used what we call the VEC controller, and this VEC controller also landed on the same communication wire, and that's what's controlling the train rooftop for the changeover uh, bypass system. The only other really gotcha here that we had to overcome is, I don't have a picture here to show, but the the zone damper of the train tracker system uh, is uh, it's very it's very much embedded together with the damper actuator, the gear itself, and the controller. So there's a box on top of the gear that you would have to take off, and that comes off completely. You, you reuse the wire from a communication perspective. You reuse the wire from all the power perspective. Again, you don't have to run any new power. Same 24 volts works for us. And the only other thing you would have to do is that the gear that sits on top of the shaft for the damper movement is very um, short. It's very short and, and so you would have to have an extension, a more of a rod extension that you would have to provide on top of that. And uh, that's something that could be uh, fairly easy accessible through uh, Ruskin. Ruskin does provide a rod extension that you could, that you, you could get and you would have to have that extension to be able to mount our controller, our zone controllers on top of the existing shaft that's there. So again you have to have that extension. So this really concludes my video uh, for uh, providing some level of information on a retrofitting a train tracker system to a Verisys system. Thank you for joining.